Hello, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today, we're going to move into volume, we'll go past area and talk about the volume of solids. Now, this is going to be a little bit weird to start off. It's not too hard. We're going to take it step by step with this lesson, and then the next lesson builds off of this, and it's very easy for the next one. So for this lesson, what we're doing is recognizing that this area now, the area that we form with bounded regions, is now going to be the base. And that's important. It's the base of a solid. So this solid is coming off of the screen towards you. It's kind of weird. You could, it's like you're above it. You're looking straight down on it. And all you can see is this. You don't know what the shape of it looks like. All you can tell is the outline of it because you're straight above it. Okay. So, uh, what does this thing look like? I don't know. We have to think about some other things and that is this part of it, cross sections. So a cross section is when you take an object and you slice it. So let's just do a slice right down the middle of it. And you, if you, we could slice this thing and open it up, like peel it back and open that little slice right there, that would be a cross section that is a square. So there's a few things to recognize when it talks about cross sections, we have to know if it's which direction it's perpendicular. So the perpendicular is important part, the perpendicular to the X axis. And we have to know what the shape of the cross section is. So those are the two things to look at if it's the x-axis or y-axis and the shape. In today's lesson, we're only going to do squares and rectangles, so we're gonna keep it pretty simple. So what in the world does this shape look like? Well, it's really hard to understand three-dimensional. Like, I struggle knowing three-dimensional, so let me show you something kind of cool here. I have the exact same graph, right? This square root of x and the x squared parabola, and these are crossing. So I've driven, given myself a cross section and I could move the cross section anywhere along here that I want. So this cross section is a square, but it's again, it's hard to see. But if I could take this graph and tilt it three dimensionally up like this, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Look at that. There's my square. It's a square. That one tiny slice of the volume or excuse me, the tiny slice of this solid creates a square. You can't see it from here. And so if I turn it this way and then I start adding, I'm going to I'm going to move this over here to the side and just start adding more and more squares. So the more squares I have, which in other words, the more cross sections I put into this graph, the more it's going to look like the shape that I want. See, if I look at it from above, I'm just putting more and more little lines, all tons and tons of lines. And then I can see what in the world is this shape doing? So in fact, I'm going to watch this. Oh, that's so well, That's going to make me dizzy. Let's spin it slowly. So I can take this thing and for, there is my three dimensional object, or I can, let's go less and less. Is it working? Yeah, there we go. So we've got less and less squares, less and less squares. And so th this helps us get a little bit of an idea of what's actually happening. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about when you have the width of this square comes off the screen, the same amount. So if it's really tiny up here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Whoops. Let's go to one. So if it's a very small little uh, cross section, then that means the square will be small. And if we, the further towards the middle we get, if you get towards the middle, then that cross section gets bigger and bigger, and then it would get smaller and smaller if you get back down there where it's hardly, uh, hardly any distance. So the distance is really small there. So the square is small. Now, when we do rectangles, this would be the width of the rectangle and the height. We'll talk about how we figure out the height there in just a second. So let's go back to our problem. We first have to figure out the area of what a square is. Well, a square is just the one side times itself. So it's S squared. So for this example, my S is this distance. What I put in blue here, this little line, the cross sections S is one side. How far is that distance? It's the graph that's on top minus the graph that's on bottom. So in this example, it would be the square root of X minus X squared. That's one side. So now I, what I do is I take an integral and I'm going to go from zero to one. And then I do it of one cross section. The area of one cross section is this squared, right? Because this is one side and then I square it to get area. So I, this is one cross section. When I take the integral from zero to one, it's saying I want all the cross sections. I want every single possible cross section in between zero and one, and we're going to sum them up. That's what an integral does from up for us with respect to X. So what we're practicing today is setting up the integrals from here. You can use a calculator and I already did this. So I know the answer is 0 0.128. And then, uh, depends if you truncate around cause that last digit's a five. So we're not going to practice taking the 
antiderivative. We're going to practice setting up the integrals and then you can use your calculator to jump to the answer. All right, let's go to now that we've just practiced one, let's go to the rules. And that is when we have to find the volume of a solid and we know their cross sections, we are going to integrate the area of one of the cross sections. So what is the area? It depends on the shape. So, oh yeah, the A of X is the area of a cross section. If it's perpendicular to the X axis, we'll talk about perpendicular to the Y axis in just a minute. So it depends on the shape. In today's lesson, we're just focusing in on squares and rectangles. So what's the area of a square? Simple, it's one side times the other side. So it's just S times S, S squared. And then you just have to remember what is the S? It's the distance from the function that's on top minus the function that's on bottom. That's the square, the side, excuse me. And then you do quantity squared and integrate it from A to B, whatever your boundaries are. All right, what about a rectangle? So a rectangle, we find that area by saying width times height, right? A rectangle. Now, why did I say height? Why not width times length? Because you have to remember that rectangle we showed, it's coming off of your screen. So we consider it a height with how high it's going. And then the width is just how far apart the graphs are. So the width is this. It's the same as the S yes over here. And then the height, they have to give it to us. It's not just going to be known by looking at a graph. We have to be told in the problem what the height of the rectangle is. Okay, let's do some problems. So we're going to take this same exact area that we just worked with in number one, but this time we're going to do it perpendicular to the y-axis. So this is where it changes. So you got to see is perpendicular to the y-axis, extremely important. I see kids miss these problems all the time simply because they think x-axis and not y-axis. And then we have to recognize that it does say squares. So squares, perpendicular to the y-axis, that's the important part that I pull out. All right, now what else? Um, so I have to, oh, because I'm doing it in terms of y, I have to get it to look like terms of y. So I take my y equals square root of x, solve for x, so x is going to equal y squared. Which one's that one? That's this. So that one is x equals y squared. And then my other equation was y equals x squared. And if I solve for x, I'm going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of y. So this one right here is x equals, it's the positive square root of y. It's just the right side. So it's the positive side, not the left side, which is the negative square root of y. Okay. Now, how do we do this? We're going to go from the smallest y value, which is a zero, up to the highest y value, which is a one. And then I start off with equation or the function that's on the right side. So in this case, it's the square root of y. And then we subtract the one that's on the left side, which in this example is y squared. So this is the distance between these two graphs. So that is the side. If we're looking for a square, we have to do its area. So a side squared, and then with respect to y. So that's the setup. And then from there, we could go ahead and take the integral using our calculator or doing it by hand, but we'd have to be careful and multiply this whole thing out. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Set it up, use a calculator to help you solve it. Next up, rectangles. So now we have a new area. This is the base of a solid bounded by these regions here, these lines. So there's my region. And I want to find a volume and uh, what am I looking? So I see cross sections. That's the key. I see cross sections. I see it's perpendicular to the X axis. So it's going to be up and down. So I'm going to just draw a cross section like this. And then what's the shape? It says it's a rectangle whose height is two times its width. Okay. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's start setting up our integral. So my integral goes from zero to two. So zero to two. And then my width, I need my width first. So my width is just this thing. So it's this graph to the x-axis. Well, that makes it simple enough. It's just x cubed, right? x cubed. There's my width. Now I'm going to times it by the height. And it says that the height is two times the width. So it's two times what I just wrote down for the width, which is x cubed. So sometimes it might be a subtraction thing in here, like a little bit longer. And whatever it is, that's what you're going to put there when it says two times its width. And then what is this with respect to X? So we could clean this thing up a bit, simplify it down and just say zero to two of, this all becomes two X to the sixth. I could even move the two out if I wanted, put the two in front of the integral. Uh, but that's the integral that's, that we set up. And this is a pretty easy integral to figure out the area, excuse me, not the area, this would end up being volume. So if we had units, just don't forget that if we had units, like if this represented centimeters squared, then the answer to this would be centimeters cubed, right? Centimeters cubed for volume. So just make sure you're doing your units correctly when we start getting into some of these. Um, okay, now let's do it perpendicular to the y-axis. So this time I'm going this direction. 
So I need, let me get rid of my units there. I need to figure out what these equations are in terms of y. Well, that one's easy. That's just my x equals two. But what about this one? This one's going to be x equals, you take the cube root of both sides. So cube root of y. Now we can start setting up my equation. So my lower boundary, the lowest y value is a zero. My highest y value of this area goes all the way up to here, which is an eight. So we say from zero to eight. And then I'm going to start off with, what's the one on the outside here? It's a two, the one further to the right, right? We're doing it with respect to y now. So we go furthest to the right, that's just two. And we subtract the one that's on the inside here, the one on the left, which is the cube root of y. And now that is my, I don't just do quantity squared automatically. This is my, uh, what? My width, right? That's my w. Now I times it by the height. So times it by, now what do they say the height is? The height is six. Notice it doesn't say six times the width, like up here it did, it said two times the width. It's just six, so I can close it like that. And then with respect to y, and then that's it. That's, that's what I've got for my integral setup. Now, if it had said six times the width, let me just show you what that would look like. If it said six times the width, you'd have another one of these. And so you could write it like this, cube root of y quantity squared, right? Because it would be six times the width again. So there would be two of them and you could just write it as quantity squared. Um, okay, so that's if you see that going on. Just be careful if it says six times the width or if it's just the height is six. Okay, one more example and then we're all finished. Now, what do we do if you don't have a graph? So when we don't have a graph, we just have to figure out like what we've done before, we have to figure out the boundaries. So we, we need to know when do these things equal each other? Where do they cross? Because it is setting up a, an area. So let's solve this, bring everything to one side. What do I get? I get this little quadratic and then you can factor out a two. And that leaves you with this. And then we can do one more step of factoring, minus two and x plus one. So that leaves us with x equals two is one and x equals negative one is the other. So this is where these lines cross. What is going on? What does this thing look like? Well, this is an x squared minus four graph. That means it's a parabola that opens up. And this is a parabola with a negative in front of the x squared. So it's gotta be opening down. And so somehow these things overlap, like some, they're doing something like this. And we're, so we're doing that area right there. So let's set up an integral from negative one to two my ne negative one and two. Now, which one goes first? Let's just do a test point. What's a number in between negative one and two? How about zero? Zero sounds like an easier one to figure out. So when I plug a zero in here, I get negative four. When I plug a zero in here, I get zero. So which one's bigger? Zero is bigger. So that's the one that I'm going to start with. Two, oh, I'm gonna, let's do a bracket. Hold on here. Open this thing up with a bracket because I'm gonna have a lot going on. So, and then parentheses, two x minus x squared minus, and then I do the one that was underneath, which is x squared minus four. Close my bracket. And now remember it's perpendicular. To, oh, I should have underlined that first. Perpendicular to the x-axis. That's why I knew it was with respect to x. But then it's, oh, it's squares. Okay, so that means this is this whole thing is one side of it. So I just quantity square it. And that gives me my square. Square, square. That's confusing. Uh, and then what can I do? Let's, yeah, let's simplify that. So then I get negative one to two and let's do the X squareds first. Negative X squared minus X squared, negative two X squared. And then the X term would be a plus two X. And then I've got a minus negative four that gives me plus four. So I have this interesting quadratic here. And then I do quantity squared because of this squared right here with respect to X. So there's the setup. This gives me volume of that weird solid shape where this area is the base of it and all the cross sections are squares. Okay, we've covered it all. So in our next lesson, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except instead of squares and rectangles, we're going to do semicircles and triangles. That's the only difference. So it'll be a pretty fast, easy lesson for us once you get this stuff down well. But squares, let me tell you right now, the most common problem I have seen on the AP exam are when it's with, with respect to the x-axis and they are squares. So this is a really important lesson to get down. It doesn't mean you're gonna see that on the AP exam, it's just the one I've seen the most often. Okay, rock that mastery check. I'll see you back in our next lesson.